how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And all of those that are here with me in person, if we can, just put our hands together and give God a wonderful hand praise. And those who are on our online sanctuary, do the same thing. I want to see those hands emojis going up, hands emojis going up. And, and this is praise and worship the Lord together. God is so good. And um, it's that time and before we get started. I normally ask everyone to partner with me and let's become um, um, evangelists together. Let's become evangelists together. Tell evangelists that is. And let's begin to share, share, share. If you can, just share um, with everybody um, that you know. Tag a few friends, have them come in and like, hit the like button so um, um, our time tonight can show on people's um, screens and let them know that we are in the room. Share is with as many people as you can. Let them know that we are here. And uh, we're just excited about what God is doing. Um, say a big praise the Lord to Sister Nesbitt, who's in the house with us today. And, and Sister Fleming, God bless you for being in the house with us today. Dr. Shandy, God bless you for being in the house with us on today. Sister Gwen Nichols, um, God bless you for being with us on today. Um, Sister Cheryl Moore, our church coordinator, thank you for all that you do, and thank you for being in the house of the Lord with us today. Sister Joyce Faye, God bless you. Sister Joyce Russell, for being in the house with us. It's so good to have you with us on today. Everybody, if you can, just um, put your hands and mosey together and um, welcome Lady Scott, who's in the house with us um, today. We thank God for her. Pastor Jones, God bless you, man. Um, it's good to have you in the house with us today. Pastor Jones, one of our pastors from New Albany, Indiana. God bless you for being with us today. Elder Elkins, praise the Lord to you, man. Um, it's good to have you with us. Mother Benson, um, praise the Lord to you um, for being on with us today. It's just so good to have each and every one of you on today. I know if Sister Cheryl Moore is on, that means Mother Mitchell is somewhere close by. Um, and it's good to have her with us on today. Sister Isom, God bless you for being uh, with us on um, today. Uh, I see Sister Jennings has stepped into the house. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Um, as you come on, come on in the room. Come on, come on, come on. And Let's have a wonderful time together. And I'm excited about what God is going to be saying in the midst on today. I pray that everybody's been enjoying this wonderful spring-like weather. Um, here in St. Louis has been beautiful. Of course, it's um, allergy season for some of us. And so we're asking everyone to be mindful um, because that can trigger so many other issues your asthma can. I mean, your allergies can. It, it can trigger your asthma and some other things so um take some time to, to do what you need to do to take care of yourself in this season sister e is in the house with us sister deborah elkins god bless you for being with us in the house on tonight um so good to have family coming in the house um elder elkins um both of them are elders um, um sister sister e and uh, Roland Elkins, Deborah and Roland are in Texas, Garland, Texas, um, our, our family in Texas. And we are excited because come June the 19th, we're calling all the stones back. And um, let's just celebrate 90 years together, um, coming from everywhere, everywhere, all walks of life, from wherever you may be. Um, this is a great time to come home and just visit um, with us. Um, our celebration of, uh, is doing our power conference, which we'll be celebrating 90 years. Now, back early um, on in um, in the 80s, 70s, and 60s, we simply at um, Lively Stone used to call it June Conference. Uh, it used to be our June Conference. And so we're inviting everyone back to be with us for our conferences. It is now called our Holy Convocation. And it doesn't just serve our local church, but our Holy Convocation serves all um, the churches that are in fellowship with us. And so we're looking for everybody to come back, schedule. Let's just have a wonderful time together. Um, Pastor Sherry Mitchell, God bless you for being with us. Um, Brother Ray, um, God bless you. Now, Brother Ray is in Paducah, Kentucky. 
um, and he celebrates with us and worships with us in our Nortonville campus right now. But I'm going to be in Paducah this Saturday. And so all those in Paducah area, um, um, get ready and let's uh, fellowship together and, and, and get ready to um, just have a wonderful time in the Lord. This Saturday at 10 o'clock, I'll be at, at the um, um, Redison Inn um, Hotel. Um, and so just come over at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Be with us. And we're looking to have a wonderful time in the Lord. I'm going to get that on the screen for everyone so that everyone can see it. Make sure you get the address um, and make sure that you know where to come because all of our friends in Paducah, I'm looking for you to be with us. That is this Saturday, this Saturday. Um, and um, you don't want to miss it. We're just going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. So um, let's get ready to um, um, continue to grow together tonight on our Inspire um, lesson. We're going to be going again to our um, Good Morning book, which we are studying from um, doing our Inspire lessons for this year. We started last year. And so we're excited about what God is saying to us um by way of his word if you don't have the book good morning you want to get it get your copy um you can get it from amazon barnes and nobles or you can um write us in the chat and we can give you the information on how to um, get a copy of the good morning it is a 65 day devotional that we say take a moment to just um hear god Every day, every day you should be hearing from the Lord and hearing what he is saying to you every day. Every day you should be hearing from him and taking time to listen to him, taking time to hear his voice. So we thank God for everyone that's have your books. Um, Sister Brenda Jackson in Lawton, Oklahoma, our family is watching. God bless you um, from Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, Sister um, Brenda, I pray that you have your book there in Lawton, Oklahoma, and make sure all your friends have their book. Uh, I see you, Deetra. God bless you. Sister Gloria um, Carruthers, God bless you for being with us. We're excited about it. But let's have a word of prayer. We're getting ready to go into the word of God. Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us, and we thank you for just being so kind where we can just have this moment to go into your word. God, I'm sending out special thoughts and, and prayer requests to those who are struggling physically um, in the earth. And God, I pray that you would um, touch them. God, without me saying their names and, and specifically calling out a name, you know who's on our hearts and you know who this call and prayer is for. Now, there's others that are hearing me that has um, those same requests of those who loved ones that have gone into the hospital that are struggling God, I pray that you would touch them and heal them. God, for you are able. Now, as your servant decreases, I pray that you will increase in us. Let our tongue be that of a ready writer, God. You speak down for your purpose, your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, praise the Lord, Sister Sutherland. God bless you for being with us on tonight. I see you, Sister Lynn. Sister Lynn Nesbitt is also in the house with us. God bless you for being with us. Mother Washington um and sister stephanie god bless you for being with us tonight listen grab your your good morning books and let's um um, um kind of examine a class for this week we're going to be looking at class um, week number 35 week number 35 is where we're going to be on this week um it's, it's it's kind of a lesson that kind of fell in my heart um as i was reading and um the header for the week, the header for the week, again, most people, we should be past um, 35, um, but 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 we're going from week to week, picking out a lesson from the Good Morning book. And I pray that you keep, keep reading, keep studying, keep allowing God to speak to you through this book. But week number 35, it says, folks who think they must always speak the truth overlook another good choice which is silence. People that always feel like they have to speak the truth overlook another good choice, which is silence. So our thought for the, today 
is simply what I'm no words. It's just a sign. That's our thought for today, right? Um, matter of fact, uh, in Thessalonians chapter number four, um, before we go to Proverbs, where the scriptures come in Thessalonians chapter number four, um, I believe um, that's where we're going to start today. Thessalonians chapter number four, sec, uh, second, let me say second Thessalonians, um, second Thessalonians. Oh, no, I'm sorry. First Thessalonians <laughs> chapter number four, first Thessalonians chapter number four, verses 11 and 12. And the text here says, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. Let me read this again because I want this to fall in your spirit. That you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your hands as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. So if I was to say that in, um, in, in Scott's commentary, it would sound like this. Be quiet and mind your own business and work with your skills and your talent. As we've taught you, as we've trained you, that you may continue to be honest toward everybody with having a need to want for anything. That will be Scott's commentary, right? Um, the millennial commentary will simply say, shut up, stop talking. Um, another commentary will say, you're talking too much. <laughs> um, but one of the things I find interesting about this particular text is there is a need to understand how important silence is. Silence is a powerful tool that God has given us that we, we don't use enough. Sometimes instead of talking to make yourself heard or understood, sometimes you just need to be quiet. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things that silence will do, silence will, um, silence will, Protect the truth. I need to. I need to share. I need you to hear what I just said. Silence will protect the truth. Many times we get into a position where we try to defend ourselves for a truth, when silence will protect the truth better than your words can. In this particular um, 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 scripture, um, the Greek word um, for for um, si or for truth carries a connotation of reality, sincerity, and genuineness. In the context of these verses, it refers to the rejection of the truth of the gospel and the consequences of believing falsehood. And this particular text is dealing with the, the issues that are faced in scripture that we're faced today. Because the Bible says we're going to come into a time where people will not hear or hear to um, truth. They will, they will run after false doctrine. Matter of fact, in the text, it simply says people will not hear sound doctrine. And we're living in that time now. I mean, it seems like everywhere we are, um, are, 
are faced with, it seems like there's an element of truth always being attacked, always being attacked. And as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to understand that our ultimate goal is to stand for truth. As Jesus simply said in, in John um, 4 and 16, um, Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's important to understand that Jesus' whole life was based upon the truth. And as we walk in the truth, our life must be based in the truth. But one of the, one of the options of preserving truth that we don't take is silence. You got to understand that we cannot be caught, caught up trying to defend um, what we perceive to be the truth is in our lives with so many words. My, my mom used to always say to me, boy, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer. I'm like, why I need to be a doctor or a lawyer? Because she said, boy, you talk too much. And anybody who talks too much, they're automatically going to think they're not telling the truth. And that was one of the things growing up in the country they would always tell us, that don't talk so much. Use silence to preserve the truth. Anybody who's always trying to tell you what they know is actually showing you what they don't know. Because they're trying to preserve their own credibility with words. And many times, if you stay there long enough, and if you listen long enough, you'll find that the truth is not in them. And I, 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 it's amazing um, that we are living in a time that truth can be so manipulated um, and, and how people see the truth. Um, the raw facts of the matter, the raw facts of truth is not desired anymore, right? Um, the Lord simply says, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he will not enter in the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus also declared he's the, he's the way, the truth, and the life. So what he said is true, although many people will not accept that as truth. And they will bend it, they will turn it, and then what we'll find ourselves doing, fighting, trying to get them to see, we try, we argue about the doctrine. The Bible typically said, don't argue with the doctrine. That's a, a foolish person does that. And you find out that God does not need us to defend him because it's going to be that whether you accept it or not, whether you believe it or not. Matter of fact, that's why he goes on and said, except you um, believe um, and is baptized. I mean, it's very clear that you have to, to believe and know that God, he is the way. He is the ultimate way. So when we look at this idea of, of accepting um, truth and affirming truth through silence, um, our weekly study takes us to Proverbs. So let's go there. Um, Proverbs, the 16th chapter. And let's just read the verses that we're getting our thought from. Um, Proverbs 16 chapter. And it says, preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Uh, all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. 
Meaning, although that person that's prideful in their heart may be connected to you and may be blessed because he's around you, he will not still go unscathed. By mercy and true iniquity is purged. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Let me stop there. This last text, I think, is very key to what, what um, our thought is this week in, in, in supporting um, truth through silence. We spend a lot of times trying to convince people about who we are um, be using words. And sometimes um, we used to sing the song on Deacon Holly, May the Works I Do Speak for Me. And we've gotten away from that. We've gotten away and we we, we want our accolades um, that we say or when somebody say something about us to speak for us. And so we don't really want to walk in that level of humility anymore. Um, we, we, we want to put ourselves out there. But this text really talks about um, following truth and, and, and standing for truth. And there's an option in standing for truth. And that's just simply being quiet. Many times when we are walking day to day, and I, I'm talking to somebody that's hearing me right now, you do not have to prove yourself to anybody. You spend time proving yourself, ultimately, you're going to extend yourself into a level of falsehood. I need everybody to say, you need to be what God's called you to be. Be what God's called you to be. Put that in the comment line. Be what God has called you to be. Because when you're not, okay, when you're not being what God's called you to be and, and living in a sense of false um, reality, you're actually perpetrating a lie. You're perpetrating a lie. Do you not know that you don't have to speak a lie, you can live a lie. Yeah, you can live a lie, and 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 what what the word says um, um, very clearly, he says all liars. And a lot of times we we use um, that particular text, all liars, to actually meaning words spoken, but it's life lived. It's not. It's not words just spoken, but it's life lived. Your life can be a lie. And so therefore, God is saying, hey, all liars are going to be dealt with. And that's the reason why the text that we read in Proverbs is that even though we join hand in hand, don't believe that the person who does not live in truth is going to go unpunished. And we live in a time where people do not believe God's word is real. You can't afford to get caught up in that. You can't afford to get caught up in that. God is truth. When, when God, according to John 1 and 14, and, and, the, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men, when God became flesh and dwelt amongst men, he became the embodiment of truth. He became the body man true. Let's look at um, John um, chapter number eight, St. John. Let's go there, chapter number eight, and let's go to verse number 32. Let's just read um, that text, verse number 32. I will start with verse number 31. And Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make you free. Now, the text doesn't say you shall speak the truth. You should know the truth. You shall live in the truth. And that truth shall make you free. My desire and goal tonight as I, as I talk to you is that we return to the truth. And the truth is not loud. 
the truth is simply lived. That's why the text says to, to work as you've been taught, as it's been passed down for you to do, work. Do you not know one of the greatest com commandments that God gave was to love thy neighbor as thyself? Think about it. To love your neighbor as yourself takes work. Because it gives us two realities in that, in that statement. Number one is to love thyself. And then number two, love thy neighbor as thyself. Not just love thy neighbor, but love thy neighbor as thyself which elevates the level of concern that you have for your neighbor. And by this, people will know that you are my disciples. It's for this love that's being generated from man to man. Not any kind of love, but a true and perfect love that could only come from Jesus Christ himself. So love thy neighbor as thyself. That takes work. That, 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 really, that really takes work to love yourself. Not love yourself first in terms of love yourself over someone else. It's not saying that. But what it is saying, recognizing God as the author and finisher of your faith. And because his grace and mercy redeem you because of his love for you, that same love should be extended to the next brother and sister so that they also may be redeemed. Understanding the word neighbor, loving thou neighbor, deals with this idea of one that may not be in the same faith, walking in the same way as you. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Because if they were walking in the same way, I believe the text would say, love thy family. But it's really referring to someone who may not believe like you, may not sound like you, may not talk like you, may not um, look like you, um, may not do it like you, may not say it like you. Love them like you would love yourself or love your family or love the extension of you. That takes work, saints. And what we have done and what we've gotten to the point of doing is we have started loving people with words, not works. Oh, okay, I'm in trouble. We're loving them with words. And we're quick to throw it out there. I love you. And they say, I love you too. But there's no works behind that. Sometimes instead of saying, I love you, you can be quiet and just do the works. Do the works. Do the, it specifically talks about do the works with your hands. And what it's talking about is that in the Old Testament writing, remember, um, part of the curse that was given to man after Adam's sin was that you was going to have to work by the sweat of your brow. It's talking about working with your hands to actually produce something. In other words, it's not going to be in the garden. It's not going to be in the paradise and everything is not going to, it's not going to be there just waiting for you and dripping for you and all that good stuff. No, now you got to work to make it happen. So your love for someone can't just be lip service. You got to work to make it happen. Your affection or empathy towards someone can't just be lip service. You got to work to make it happen. And what we do is try to allow a word to take place of our actions. And once we use words to take place of our actions, we are literally not being truthful. 
Because at the point that that happens, the Bible talks about that our lips say one thing, but our hearts are far from it. We got to get back to the place where we are genuine and pure in who we are before God and before man. Where I ain't got to explain who I am, what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Understand because I love God. I worship God. I do these things for God. Paul was, was, was concerned about this truthfulness of um, this truthfulness of works. Um, and Paul writes to the church, he says, you know, what he's doing is not of any works that he can boast about, but it is Christ that does the work through him. Because what happens is, is that we will take the um, um, the God factor or the, the, the God favor and make it like we own it, and that's a God thing, not a, not a me thing. I got quiet in this house. Yeah, that's a God thing, not a me thing. And what we render to other people can't just be a God thing. It's got to be a me thing too. I offer. I offer. I do. It can't be, well, the Lord telling me to do this for you. Well, that's the Lord. That's not you. Boy, it's quiet in this place. This is the wrong lesson tonight. Y'all forgive me. This is the wrong lesson tonight because I'm going to quiet in this place. And we do that. And we take no accountability for the true change and, and transformation that God wants to do in your life as it relates to his truth in your life. His truth in your life. I'm going to try this one more time. As it relates to his truth in your life. Matter of fact, in, in Ephesians chapter number four, verse number 25, Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, and he exhorts all the believers to put away falsehood and speak the truth with your neighbor. In other words, live truthfully. Be honest in your actions and in your deeds and in your words. For we are members of one another. And this phrase, this, this phrase emphasizes of the importance of honesty and integrity in the relationships amongst believers. Amongst we, when people see us, they should know that these are true God fearing believers that are willing to live the way God wants us to live. James, let's go there real quick. James chapter number one, James proclaimed um, in verse number 18. Let's get there. James chapter number one, verse number 18. Um, James proclaims, of his own we will, he brought us forth by the word of what? Truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his, crea of his creatures. This verse highlights the transformative power of the truth of God's word in bringing about new life in believers. We are only able to stand as believers of God because of the truth. It is that same truth that has to permeate through us that actually draws other believers. We don't have to make anything else up. We don't have to become overly intellectual to try to explain everything. The word is the word. And that word, his word, is truth. Um, um, as we look at John chapter number 17, um, verse number uh, 17, show you how powerful 
truth is. And that it doesn't always have to be something that we're yelling about on on a on 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 on, on a mountain screaming. There's just something that we should be living because the Bible says to sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is true. Now watch this. Once God sanctify you about your truth, it's not about you yelling, I'm saved now. I'm saved. Sanctified. Filled up with the Holy Ghost. Fire baptized. Running for Jesus. And I ain't tired yet. It's not about you saying all that. What it's about is now living a sanctified life before God. And no words can declare that sanctification. Whoo, y'all missed that one right there. No words can declare that sanctification. Only God himself declares that it is good. Matter of fact, Paul tries to, 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 to say it as, as close as he could when in Romans chapter number 12 is one of the scriptures you hear me quote all the time that I beseech you, I implore you, I beg you by the mercy of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. Then he says, holy, watch this, which is what? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Holy and acceptable unto God. The only thing that declares holiness and acceptability before God is God himself. For his word is what? True. You can't say, I did it. Now I'm saying, that's one of the problems pro when, when we go on fast. When we go on fast, one of the first time thing we say, especially when times get, get a little aggravating for us and, and we feel ourselves weak, we say, I'm fasting. So you want everybody to know that you're going through this moment of, of self-affliction uh, as if it's okay for you to act nasty. And at the moment that you do that, your sacrifice is null and void. It's not acceptable unto God. Because God is expecting you. He says, when you weak, I make strength. So in that time of self-infliction, of, 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 of drawing ourselves into a point of weakness so we can see God's strength, it's not an excuse for us to be nasty. But what do we do? We use words to describe our nasty disposition. As if it's okay. You forget that Paul told the saint to endure hardship as a good soldier. And a good soldier keeps his mouth closed. So, 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 so Pastor Chad Hunter, we have to understand it is the truth that's going to keep us where we need to be in God. And you don't have to prove yourself in terms of where you are with God to nobody. Ephesians chapter number four, verses number 25. Uh, I think we, we, we may have read this and I'm going to read it again. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. All members of one body speaks to the body of Christ. Put off lying in the church. Oh, my God. You ain't got to lie in the church. <laughs> we got church liars. I, I need, can y'all put that in the comment? Put that in the comment for church liars. We got church liars. <laughs> they come to church and all they do is lie. They lie and then they want you to think that they're so saved and sanctified. But they lie they want you to believe this about them, and they can't do this. They want you to believe that about them, and they can't do that. And, and, and Paul's telling the church, put that off. Don't do that. Be the, very, be the very best that God has called you to be and stay true to that. Stay true to that. 1 John chapter number 3, verse number 18 says this, dear children, 
Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Woo, there it is. First John, chapter number three, verse number 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. We got to get away from words being the thing that describes who we are. I, and, and what I mean by that is that we're saying a, a descriptive and we're making a reality and actions does not back that up. That's what I'm trying to declare to you. We got to get to the point where we're speaking the actions of who we are and people can see that. Wasn't that the issue that Jesus had when he says he was hungry um, before he goes to um, 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 the Calvary? He goes out and he sees the fig tree and it looked like it bore fruit. And he goes to the tree and it bore no fruit. In other words, um, for a, a descriptive of a plant that the actually looking like it bore fruit was like words saying, I'm ready to be eaten. But when they went to the tree, there was no fruit. And it tells you, uh, and Jesus Christ tells you and shows you how God thinks about it. The Bible says he immediately, he cursed the tree and said, you will bear fruit. You will. He cursed it to the point that it would die. In other words, whenever you give a falsehood in Christ of who you are and you have no actions to back that up, you will surely die. Okay. Um, Psalm chapter number 25. Let's go to the 25th. Um, 25th. I see you still putting, we got liars in the church. I know we do. We got liars in the church. But what does Psalm 25, verse number five says? Watch what it says. Speak it to the Lord. Guide me in your truth and what? Teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Guide me in your truth and teach me. Psalm um, 86 verse number 11 says teach me your way Lord that I may rely on your faithfulness give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name I want to be truthful before God all the time it's amazing to me how people um, can live this life of um a, a falsehood and think that God don't see them. Okay, y'all miss it right there. I, I, let me try to say it one more time. It's amazing how people go and try to hide before God and act like God don't see them. God sees you. Come on, yell at me. God sees you. God sees you. It, Adam did that. He sinned. The Bible says he went and hid himself. Like God wasn't going to see him. Like God wasn't going to know where he was. But it is indicative of what a sinful life will cause you to do. A sinful life will always cause you to hide. And when you covet your sin, you're hiding. Ooh, ooh this is a heavy one tonight. This is a heavy one. When you covet your sin, you're hiding before God. And when you're hiding, you're lying. Proverbs 23 and 23. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. Pure truth will give you wisdom, 
instructions and insight. Pure truth, pure truth, I got to say it again, will give you wisdom, insight, and instructions. One of the things, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to close this, this, this lesson, but um, one of the things I, I thought was interesting that um, there's one text that simply says that I will, I will become silent so that you may teach me. And in order for you to actually be taught something, you have to become silent. One of the Hebrew words for this silence deals with humility, reverence, honor. It's one of the reasons why I know I know we don't we don't we don't necessarily do it in the Pentecostal um, 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 experience um, because we really believe in making a joyful noise. But there is a belief that when you come before God, that you reverence him by being silent. The only voice we want to hear here is God's himself. And so that's why in some religious traditions, you cannot walk into the sanctuary or walk into the place of the altar talking because it shows disrespect to the authority of the house. Here's what we'll say. When someone else is talking, show respect by not talking. We don't forget common basic sense that was actually taught from a biblical point of view. When you go before God, get quiet. Let him speak. We, 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 we and I, I understand that in some of our churches, we don't have gathering spaces where people can commune and talk and praise the Lord with each other. But when we walk into the, the, the place of the sanctuary where we're looking to experience God, there should be a reverence for that. And, and in the Hebrews, uh, um, wording and study, one of that is um, 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 silence. The word that they use for silence that deals with reverence, deal with quietness and peace, peacefulness. People who are walking in Christ, in the truth of Christ, there should be a peacefulness about you. Yea, though, I walk in the valley of, of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. He leadeth me beside what? It's a quietness in that text. He's talking about being in a place where I can hear God and not overtalk God. Even in our, our religious practicing of prayer, there needs to be a time of quiet. Yes, there's a time of petitioning God, calling on him. But there's a time, God, whatever you say, I want to hear it. You got to get silent. You got to get quiet. And so you got to understand that this is all in the lessons when you start talking about silence from a biblical point of view. And, and when, we, when, we, when, we, when we talk about silence, one of the other things that I, I loved about um, this particular study, um, it emphasizes the importance of being self-sufficient and not causing unnecessary um, disturbances. I'm here now, y'all. Come on now, that's unnecessary. That every time you walk in, that somebody got to know you here. That's unnecessary. 
Anytime we cause a disturbance, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You're not walking because that silence that in from a biblical standpoint deals with peacefulness. Let me just say this to you for someone who walks in the purity of truth. When you walk in the midst of a disturbance, people should feel peace from you. Matter of fact, watch how, how we're instructed in wisdom to deal with conflict. It says, a soft answer turneth away wrath. He's talking about, he's talking about again, he is talking about silence and allowing the truth to work. It's amazing to me. Matter of fact, let me let, let's just let's go to Proverbs 17 and 28. Let's 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 read this text. Proverbs 17, verse number 28. And let's let's just hear what the wise man says and 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 giving us wisdom. Proverbs chapter um 17, it's the last verse of, of, of that. It si simply says, even a fool. When he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and that he what shutteth his lips and esteemed a man of understanding. Even a fool knows it's better to keep your mouth closed when you stand in the presence of truth and wisdom. Woo. And, and understand, it doesn't take away who you are as a man or as a woman. When you walk and get in the presence of, of a man that's esteemed, a person who have experienced things, someone who's going, it's okay to be quiet and listen. Matter of fact, it says even... The, the 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 people that you think is is most outlandish will be considered a wise man at that point. I um, had the opportunity to study in various different places. One of the things that they always say is that people who have accomplished things, people who have have um, gone through some things, he says, whenever you walk in their presence and you know that they have treat, achieved things on the highest level, you should always walk in ready to ask three questions and be quiet. And listen and learn. And listen and learn. Because they're going to give you wisdom based on what God has allowed them to experience to help you through certain situations. I don't have to, I don't have to be at the same level as you. I don't have to be with the same degree as you. But my experiences through what God has allowed me to accomplish in my life, does offer value. Because in the Proverbs that we read, he says to get quiet and let your hands do the work. So if my hands is working, I'm also gathering experiences and knowledges. And as God is leading me, that should be shared amongst those who comes in our way. But many times, we spend our time trying to prove that we're just as good as they are. And that becomes our failure. Because the moment we do, now we're living in falsehoods. I'm not going to act like I, I've done just as much financially as a billionaire. I have not. My bank account proves that. So when a billionaire is sharing knowledge of how he acquired his billions, I need to be quiet and figure out how much of what he's dropping down on me at this point can I take and use for myself. Okay. When you're raising a teenager, one of the, one of the biggest things when they, when they hit pu puberty, it seems like this becomes one of the biggest challenges. Number one, they're not quiet. And number two, uh, when you say something to them, they're automatically going to say, I know. 
Those are, those are two things that happens when you start to dealing with a team that hits puberty and they're 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 coming in trying to come into the fullness of themselves. They're not going to be quiet. They're going to question you on everything, and then when you give them the answer, they're going to say, "I know." And the moment you they say, "I know," they're rejecting what you're saying, and they still won't know when they walk away because they didn't get quiet. Quietness sounds like this. And when they get through talking, you say, thank you for sharing. He that has knowledge spares not his words and a man understanding is of an excellent spirit. He who have knowledge shares his knowledge. But in order for you to get it, you're going to have to get quiet. Truth does not require defense. It's truth whether people believe it or not. When you get into a point where you have to defend truth, remember the more words you use, the greater likelihood of it becoming falsehood. So sometimes if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle, victory, victory, shall be mine father we thank you for this time that you've given us in study i pray that we said something that have inspired your people and that they heard something that would help them father in order for us to be the lights of the world and the salt of the earth we have to allow your truth to rise up in us and know that there's time that we need to be quiet and allow that silence to work on our behalf as a time of learning, as a time of understanding, as a time of getting closer to you. Now, Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Now, God, I pray that we have grown even more today, that we may be more vital in the earth is my prayer in jesus man name amen thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for being with us on tonight we pray again that we've said something that has been um truthfully um inspiring to you um also listen all those that can help help and continue to keep the ministry strong we ask everyone on our weekdays to sow ten dollars into the ministry and as you do we're helping our communities to be stronger and more vital Listen, everyone can do that. Everyone can do that. I am reaching in my pocket and I'm going to give manually today. I do give digital, but today I'm giving manually. Um, and um, I'm asking you to do the same. There's um, a QR code. Um, matter of fact, uh, I think it's text inspire. Uh, we want you to text inspire to 314-328-7559. If you will text inspire. And we will send you a link, send you the information on giving on tonight. We pray that everyone at the sound of my voice, if you would do that. If this, if this inspire time together has been a blessing to you, encourage us by sowing into it. Just saying, um, it inspired me. And after you do it, also test, um, text um, uh, and put it in the comments line that I gave. And encourage um, others to um, give. Also... Um, we don't want you to leave. Don't leave me without letting me know your takeaway. Give me something um, and let me grow with you and what you heard God saying on tonight. Come on, Deacon. Uh, what you said, what, uh, what God is saying on tonight and um, how it resonated with you and share, share it with us. Share it with us. Thank you, um, Brother Gray, for giving. Uh, thank you, Lady Scott, for giving. Um, but share it with us. Share it with us. Give us your takeaways. We want to hear from you to um, let us know what God is doing. 
we have um we, we thank you for all those who give god we thank you for this offering that has been given unto you let it be used for the building of that kingdom so that we may continue to be your hands in the earth and do your work in jesus name amen listen um sister Flemings, silence will protect the truth yes it will yes it was yes it will when you're weak you give strength to endure and also know that god sees you um that's uh that's uh her takeaway yes god sees you and god will make strength in the moment that you're weak so you don't have to overly defend yourself um yeah uh, yeah listen and learn not to respond yeah that's a good one uh, sister cheryl sister sharon when you go before god be quiet and let him speak silence that's good sister sharon um that is so true let him speak let him speak um we don't need to defend the truth that's right elder elkins we don't need to do it. lady scott says when standing in the presence of truth and wisdom keep silent that is so true lady scott come on keep putting it in uh, our comments um your takeaways for tonight keep putting it in keep putting it in um let's uh hear from you since isom uh your love can can't just be lip service it takes work that's a beautiful takeaway sister isom blessed quietness yes we used to sing that uh, elder Rollins. yeah blessed quietness dealing with the strength of the lord and knowing that we're in his presence yes 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 keep keep put it in the text comments um of your takeaway um on tonight i believe um tonight's class will, is a a wonderful wonderful lesson to meditate on lady scott got another one for us can live a lie yes you can live a lie don't have to just uh, speak a lie but you can live a lie that is so true lady scott listen thank everyone thank you for your comments keep putting the comments in the field um we'll be up a few more minutes afterwards so keep putting it up may the grace of god and the sweet communion of the holy ghost rest rule and abide now henceforth and forever god bring us back for another wonderful time of worship is our prayer in jesus name listen be with me tomorrow night um as we are um, going to be on the main campus and we're going to hear what the lord has to say to us mother cooper you say um we have to be genuine and pure um to please god that is so true so true um my auntie's in the house sister eva Pew. thank you so much for your encouragement god bless everyone i love you go in peace